find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 84. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to talk some independent professional wrestling. Uh, for me, I'm a producer here in uh, the Pittsburgh area with some local companies like the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some documentaries including Finding Back Zach Gowan, uh, Montreal Theory, and so much more with the great Joe Dombrowski on oh, something called Virgil, Legend of Virgil, and his traveling merchandise table i should probably plug that a little bit uh but uh, anyways also with me is from san antonio texas he's back he's back in school and he's ready to educate you he is the professor of independent wrestling and can i use that i'm we're gonna try to make that stick for you amen give me a new title every week there you go but of course he's certainly already the voice of inspire pro wrestling down there he is amen payton at amen Two, please on the twitter Hello, Sorg. I'm, I'm happy to be back this week. Uh, no no curtain anymore, just a Ooh, plain white wall, but I'm fancy, excited. Fancy bed. Uh, talking about indie wrestling. Fancy be- bed backboard thing going on, though. Uh, <laughs> most people are on audio anyways. Uh, but anyways, this is the independent... Or, so, yeah, the indie wrestling... Ah, oh, jeez. Here we are. Uh, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. You can check out this and so much more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also drop us a line. Uh, any thoughts on indie wrestling? Anything we should check out? Anybody we should interview? Any questions for the people coming up? 412-206-WMS0 is the voicemail hotline or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And please check out everything. Like I said, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can uh, subscribe to us. Check out all the other shows and so much more. Amen. I understand we got a pretty fun interview this week. I am very excited for this interview. Uh, uh, one of the good things I we, and I think we always kind of preach it here on the Indie Mayhem shows. Uh, uh, when you go to indie shows, definitely keeping your eyes out for for new talents and and people that catch your eye. And this is a guy that's really caught my eye lately, uh, and I'm very excited to have him on, uh, uh, making his way up in the Texas independent wrestling scene. Uh, and he's definitely one to watch. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem show this week, Terrell Tempo. Terrell, how are you this evening? Oh, man, I'm doing good. Uh, Thank you for having me on the show again, man. No problem. Absolutely. Um, I guess the first, the best way to start this off and and the way we kind of started off with most of our guests to break the ice in a sense uh, is, uh, uh, let us know, what's your first memory of watching professional wrestling? Man, my first memory, it's going to sound a little, probably a little corny, a little crazy, but I remember, I can't remember much, but I know I was in my car seat. uh, And I know my parents were getting ready to leave. So they called my little sister, I mean my little sister, they called my older sister to come in and get me. So when she came and get me, my older sister and brother, they were wrestling fans anyway. So I couldn't tell you what she was, like what match she was watching, but she was watching wrestling. Um, and that's, I believe, like one of my first memories. Like, and I can just, ever since then, I can't ever not remember wrestling not being in my life. Uh, but then if you want to go to one where I kind of like clearly remember is, is Shawn Michaels when he beat Bret Hart. And the boyhood dream, that one sticks in my head. Awesome. So it seemed, from, from what I can tell, at least maybe from your siblings and stuff like that, it was wrestling was a thing that was kind of nurtured by your family in a sense. Uh, yes, I mean, I, I wouldn't say my parents were too much into it, but definitely my uh, all my brothers and sisters are mostly into it. But my older sister and my two older brothers were the one that kind of got us into it, you know. So I've been watching it, like I said, my whole life. I can't think of a time that wrestling wasn't in it. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so to transition from that, and, and when did you start to sort of have the inkling of wanting to become a professional wrestler and, and start doing this? Um, I always know I wanted to do it, man. But, uh, you know, you always have people telling me, like, you can't do that. You know, and so you start thinking. But um, I know when I was 14, I really started, uh, I really started, I started looking into schools. And then I started, like, training. Because uh, we would do, like, football practice and lift the weights. But then... I would start doing it myself afterwards, you know, always in the summer. But yeah, definitely, I would say when I was fourteen, I kind of knew like I could, I cannot live without trying this at least. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and if I have it right, uh, did, was your first wrestling training with uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez uh, down in San Antonio? 
Yes, it was uh, June 2013. It was my first day, and uh, that was my first time training yeah, with Rudy Boy. Uh, so what was that like uh, uh, going into it, I guess, on your first day? Did you have any sort of expectations going into uh, going into training? Uh, yeah, see, well, one funny thing was is uh, I know not to eat Chipotle before I go to training now. Um, <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the first thing I did wrong. and then But it was just, no, it wasn't too much of a station. You know, I just wanted to make sure I got stuff down. And, you know, you're just nervous about it. You see, I went there like the week before and I got to see how the training was operated. So you just kind of like ready to get in. Uh, but other than that, no, man, it was uh, no expectations. I mean, it's real fundamental. We learn everything. The basics is, you know, everyday thing. So it was just, you know, I was kind of getting there just thinking like, oh, I'm going to learn the basics. I'm going to learn the basics. And that was, that's kind of how it went, you know. Awesome. So, so specifically, also, what's it like training with uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez? Because for those that don't know, uh, at least from the stuff I can tell, like he has a very good reputation when it comes to producing stars in the state of Texas, guys that are you know getting out there and wrestling everywhere. Uh, what's it like specifically, kind of training with them? It's just man, it's a everyday thing. It's Monday through Thursday. We're there from seven. Well, now it's six thirty to nine o'clock, but he's there and. It's just the basics. The basic psychology is a big thing. I, I love it, man. I was actually supposed to end up going to, I was going to go to Booker School, actually, but mm-hmm. I ended up meeting Mike Dell in Austin, and he referred me to Rudy. And Rudy was cheaper at the time, too, so I, I had to start soon. So it just, the opportunity made its way. But, like, everything Rudy does, man, is so, it's so basic, and it's, but it's good. He teaches how not to do too much. Like, you know, you tell a guy who's been wrestling a while, you know, you see him in the match and they throw a bad clothesline and you're like, hey, man, that's a, you threw a bad clothesline out there. You know, they'll get all offended. We we don't have a chance to get offended because we get to hear it every day. I mean, we do matches, you know, four nights a week and if something looks bad, you're going to hear about it. You know, if you do something stupid, you're going to hear about it. He'll kick you out the ring and that's like one thing you don't want to happen is to be kicked out the ring. So everything is is just serious, you know. Definitely, and and from the stuff I had seen of you uh, uh, most recently, I, uh, a couple months ago, I would say, uh, was you, you kind of going to that? Like you, you're very clean with your work, and it's very you can tell it's very polished. Do you think it's uh, a lot of that that time you did you spent training that kind of helps with that aspect of just making sure everything looks good in a sense? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that a little bit? No, no problem. Uh, just the. Was it the training with Rudy? Because I, from what I can tell, your work seems very, it's very polished. Like it's not just, you know, obviously you have the look and all that stuff, but your work in the ring is very, it, it comes off as very professional. Like uh, it, was that just, you know, the training with Rudy that kind of attributed to that? Yeah, man. Like, a, cause like I said, we're up there, uh, we're there four nights a week. Like I don't think people understand how much we train and sometimes we'll be there Sundays, you know, if he calls us out on it, but it, he that's the way Rudy wants it, and that's the way it has to be. But you know, he doesn't. You know, Rudy's big deal is he he says he doesn't train indie guys. He's not training you to be an indie guy. And what that means is you can definitely be on the indies, but he's training you to be a uh, professional, to be on the you know on the WWE, the TNA, the ROH. He's training you for TV level, so you have to be you know ready. So that's his big thing. Definitely awesome. Um, what would you say would be the greatest lesson you've learned just in general, whether it's, you know, in training or through just your travels on the road and stuff like that in, uh, in wrestling? Man, um, the greatest lesson. I, I love the, uh, probably just the psychology. Knowing you don't have to, to do a lot of things, but just knowing how to take people through an emotional roller coaster. Like, I think that's the, that's the best way. Um, are the best thing that I've learned. Like, and that, that was obviously from Rudy. Everything doesn't have to be flashy and cool. You know, you don't have to do all that stuff. You can do something so simple, and people will enjoy it just as much as something over the top. Absolutely, definitely. Um, so I got, I've, like I mentioned, I've gotten to see your work a little bit around Texas, but also you recently. Go got to debut for Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, uh, which I was definitely very excited about. And it seemed like you made a, a very big impression. Uh, 
uh, in your match, in your fatal four way match that you were in that also involves Scott Summers, uh, who's, you know, kind of a veteran here in the state of Texas. What was it like sort of a, a debuting for Inspire Pro Wrestling? Uh, man, I've been hearing about Inspire for, you know, I've been in San Antonio for about two, three years now. So that's a, Inspires, you know, one of the bigger promotions I've been hearing about, and uh, just hadn't came across them yet. But then I was feeling like, yeah, man, and so we kind of got in contact, and and then we did it. We ended up doing it, and Inspire was great, man. The fans over there, that's what I heard about. I heard the fans are are different, you know, San Antonio fans, Austin mm-hmm. fans, they're all different, but they love wrestling over there. And they not that San Antonio doesn't, but it's just a different way how they express their love in Austin. So. It's just real cool, man. I had a I had a blast. You know, I didn't get the the job done, but uh, I, I'll definitely be back. And I think I'm actually I'm back next month. You know, uh, this <laughs> next month, yeah. And I'll be there to go against Scott Summers one on one. So I got to make up for my loss. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> definitely. Uh, and and I kind of mentioned it. I remember when I was on commentary, the idea of the fact that like Austin is kind of notoriously like a very hard crowd to like like impress your first time out and then you seem to do it you know uh evidently like i mean they were chanting your name afterwards you it was very clear uh, uh that they were impressed by you uh so definitely definitely a big fear i think that's a testament to your work and also the fact that kind of going to what you said about how you know you can have a sort of a simple match as well and and, and you can still get that impression off of people yeah man because to me i'm all about the uh i fell in love with wrestling just for the story of it, like how the story, it doesn't to me it has to be a crazy match, but if I can see the story, you know, the smaller guy is trying to beat the bigger guy or the more athletic guys in there with the, with the better wrestler, but he's more athletic. So he has to use his athleticism to beat that guy. Like, I'm just all about the story in it. So, and I think that's what I can, you know, kind of find with fans. Like if they're, they just have to be invested and it doesn't, take a you know not there's nothing wrong with doing it but it doesn't take a shooting star press to you know that gets them invested in that move you did but what's going to get them invested in the whole match and everything you're doing and i think that's where i kind of can i try to connect with the fans so i think it inspires they picked it up well and you know worked out absolutely definitely um going into sort of uh, some of the regular questions we have on the show um, one that we've been asking is, uh, what are you watching currently uh, when it comes to wrestling, when it comes to either for recreation or for studying purposes? Uh, is there anything that you kind of have your eye on specifically? Um, I watch, I mean, obviously I watch a lot of WWE. Um, before I got down here, I was watching a lot of TNA, but that kind of fell off just with the, the scheduling of it. But uh, mm-hmm. WWE, NXT, you know, I watch a lot of indies. Uh, Texas Indies I watch but I watch a lot of Texas Indies too because I'll even tell people when Inspire you know I was back there and I met a lot of wrestlers the first time and I was like yeah I kind of know who you are seeing your work and they're just like you see my like you see my work and I'm like well yeah you never know who you're going to get in the ring against you know what I mean so especially if you're in Texas uh, but Texas I think Texas Indies a lot and definitely you know the uh, old school WWE matches some of the the newer things just just all around I'll watch Shawn Michaels the to get ideas, you know, Ric Flair. Mainly, I will say mainly WWE, but I, you know, I watched Lucha Underground for a while. I really liked them. I'll watch some ROH's stuff, uh, but mainly WWE. Awesome. And then, and going to that uh, as well, uh, going on in your career now, is there any kind of specific goals you have as maybe uh, concerning people you want to face, uh, either in, te- in Texas or, or outside? Um, any kind of goals in, in that kind of realm? Oh man, the list. I have a list as long as um this is I just like I say, I just sit up there and watch all the stuff. But I would like to, you know, face I'm liking that I'm facing Scott Summers. Uh ACH is definitely probably at the top of my list when it comes to Texas guys who I want to get in there with. Uh, I think that would be a real you know, real storytelling match right there. Keith Lee is another guy that I would like to get in there with. Uh, Alex Reigns, I'm actually facing on the fifth in San Antonio at Rudy's show, so that's gonna be that's gonna be cool. You know, Ray Rowe, uh, James Claxton, man, I can Mike Dell, I can go on and on. I don't want to leave nobody out. Absolutely, definitely. Um, and to kind of wrap things up, uh, uh, kind of the question we ask everyone on the show, and, and feel free to take it 
uh, sort of in any direction you wish, because uh, a lot of our guests uh, do. Uh, but since we are a podcast all about indie wrestling, we like to ask our guests, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best thing about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, man. Should I start off with the bad and then I can make make it up with the good? Or? So, <laughs> sometimes, some, sometimes that works out. I think I think I'll do that. I'll uh, I'll babyface this and I'll start with the bad and then we'll end off with the good. <laughs> uh, the bad thing about it, man, for me uh, as just as a wrestler, but then also I think as a fan, is just once again I think the psychology has been lost. Not only with psychology, me and Rudy Boy was actually talking about this last week. The psychology isn't just in a match, but it's how you promote your show and who's your champion and you know what what's going on with your storylines and you know and all these things and why you don't let politics get involved but i just think psychology is the main thing that's lost on people like you you need to have a champion you know if you have a champion have a champion that that looks like a champion that is a champion that puts on great matches or to me i'm not saying it's all about the look i'm just saying it's it's, you got to know your talent is what i'm saying and I just feel like a lot of times some people who well, I know a lot of times because I'm in the business. So I know, you know, friends get spots and, you know, people that's in a circle, they get the same spots. And, and then it, it just, it kills the competition because if the same guys are getting the same opportunities and you've got hungry guys coming up, how do you, you know, how do you get better? The only way to, ever, uh, to you know, to bring up your competition, to bring up everybody else, is to bring better competition around them. You know, you can kind of go back to the to the Monday Night Wars. You know, with that was a great time in wrestling, but would it have been as great if WCW wasn't there or if Raw wasn't there? No, they had to compete against each other. So these guys was bringing out the best of the best of the best in each other. Uh, so it was, it's something like that. Like, I just believe, like, psychology, uh, politics, you know, uh, guys, I think, need to, to look, you know, better looked apart. I'm not saying you have to be a big, you know, crazy, muscled up animal. I'm not saying you have to be something like that, but I do believe you should just look like an athlete. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how some people can get in the ring. You know, you got to ask yourself, if you love the sport and I'm going to be, I'm going to be in this business, in this sport, however you want to look at it. And I step in the ring and people look at me, how are they going to view the whole entire sport, you know, the the whole entire business of what pro wrestling is. So when you get in there, I do think you need to be, you know, don't look like a fan. Look like you're a wrestler because why would somebody pay to see themselves? They wouldn't. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just a big thing, too. I think the look is definitely, like I said, once again, just look like an athlete. Just look like you know what a gym looks like. Uh, that's one of my one of my big things. And I guess to end with the... Um, with a, with a positive note here, uh, indie wrestling man is uh you know I only grew up watching WWE, really and WCW and things like that, so I always wanted to do that. And but once I found out what indie wrestling was and like really dug my teeth into it, I fell in love with this with this business with wrestling more than I ever thought I did. Because you can, I think the best thing about indies is you have the freedom. One, I can be me. You know, there's nobody telling me. I got to do this and I need to wear this. It's, it's all me going out there. So if I mess up or if I don't, I have to learn how to correct myself. We help along the way, but it's it's all you. And then just the emotion you can get with the fans, like little things that will cheer up people. And you can, you know, at WWE, those guys don't really get to, to talk to the fans like we do. They don't get to interact with the fans like we do. Uh, but I think that's the best thing ever. I think it's just the, it's the best it's the best art form as well. You can tell so many stories. Uh, and I can just go on about indie wrestling forever. But I think the good thing is, is you have the freedom and you can just, with the freedom with the fans, freedom with everybody. You know what I mean? Definitely. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so to go, uh, thank you once again to Ralph for coming on and, and sort of sharing your story and, uh, and talking with us. Uh, if uh, you're on social media and people can find you or if you have any upcoming events uh, where people can check you out at, feel free to, uh, to plug away. Uh, yeah, man, uh, you can go ahead and, and check me out at my Facebook. It's going to be Terrell Tempo. That's T-E-R-R-A-L-E uh, T-E-M-P-O. Some people get on to me how I spell my name, but you know, <laughs> that's 
my mama gave me that name, so I love that name. So that's cool. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, and then also Instagram, I'm on there, and then I'm actually getting the Twitter soon. I'm working. Uh, I'm working on getting the Twitter, and people are gonna be like, "How are you working on getting a Twitter? Just sign up. It's not that. It's not that easy. Okay, <laughs> give me some slack. All right. But yeah, other than that, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's just, it's people are yelling at me. Yeah, yeah. Just to tell them, tell them, man. Tell them. Tell them. Give me some time, brother. Uh, <laughs> hey, social uh, media is hard, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man but uh yeah man and once again was that uh was that everything yeah yeah i said my facebook and my instagram and i'm actually i'm working on my twitter as well awesome yeah and then like you mentioned that show uh uh san antonio texas for uh i think i think twa is, is the promotion where you'll be wrestling on trains it's, um, yeah, uh, it's actually uh, the AIWF, but it is, yeah, Texas Academy okay, Wrestling, yeah, yeah. AIWF, and it's going to be at the Good Shepherd Church in San Antonio. Awesome. And also uh, September 13th for Inspire Pro Wrestling, you'll be wrestling Scott Summers as well. So definitely uh, many opportunities if you're in Texas to check out Terrell Tempo. And I encourage you to because it's uh, good to sort of seek out that the up-and-coming talent. Uh, and I, from what I can tell, from our, what I can see, seen of him so far, uh, I can guarantee you will be impressed. So uh, once again, thank you very much to Raul for coming on the show. And right now uh, we're going to take a dive into everything hap- that happened this week uh, in Sorgatron Media. We'll be right back. First thing I see right off the bat is uh, the Red Pirate Rogers, which is <laughs> the homage to uh, Princess Bride, which is probably one of my favorite movies. And I was like, oh, this is awesome because it's <laughs> the 80s. I, I struggle with the term, you know, the, the social media expert term, because mm-hmm. I think we're all learning all the time, and, and I think that's the best part about it. I learned that we almost fought over how to use Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> and You're like, exactly, the kids are using I'm it. I'm trying like, no, not to. You? What would it take to make you stop watching pro wrestling? What path does an NXT superstar need to take to succeed on the main roster? What went wrong with Roman Reigns, and how can it be fixed? What <laughs> Would we have the same Royal Rumble backlash if not for Daniel Bryan? If you could bring anyone in to run the WWE, who would it be? What should the WWE give up for Lent? Is the WWE Hall of Fame sustainable? What do the Divas need? More match time or better storylines? Is there a place for the kind of training that got Bill DeMott in trouble? What is your WWE Hall of Fame criteria? And we're back. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome uh, interview there. Thanks, Eamon, for hooking that up. Where do you find these guys? I guess I guess you find them on your roster, don't you? <laughs> kind of, yeah. I, I, I've always got my eyes open for, for people, so yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. We've been talking. I actually got a few, uh, a few lines of, of some people that says, hey, get a hold of me because I'm, I'm, I suck about contacting people. Like somebody that we talked about that, that these wrestles locally, of course, uh, but uh, it hasn't gotten out there that that much. But they're a great guy to talk to, and I'm just like, I've been trying to get you on for a year, but I keep forgetting to book you. Uh, it's what happens, man. <laughs> that's what happens. So we got something very special uh, lined up uh, next week. We're, we're looking actually to talk slight wrestling angle on this, uh, but the guy's behind Bar Jutsu. Bar Jutsu. Mm. So slight wrestling angle, but uh, I think we're going to have a fun conversation regardless with these guys. Uh, but anyway, so IWC's Cage Fury was this past weekend, and so was RWA's Aggression, which a big night there, last match for RWA, and I think in general for a one G Raver uh, against Gory, his tag team partner uh, in Generation Dead. And uh, I, I want to hold off. I'm going to table that for the moment because I haven't watched it yet. I was at the other show. Uh, we had the, uh, the B team down there filming that show. I'm going to edit it th- sometime this week. And then I want to uh, have a conversation about that afterwards, uh, my thoughts on that. But I was at IWC's Cage Fury. And I always like when we do have somebody from like the, the rest of the Mayhem show involved, whether they're helping me at the booth or something, uh, or they're just there in general, just to get another take on it. Because I, I think I'm a little veiled because I'm, I am working in production and have a whole other angle on the show and how it went. Um, but uh, although Bobby, we did kind of volunteer to do something. He was actually helping me with sound. Uh, but he did email in because we're way past his bedtime. Uh, Bobby tired. Bobby tired. Um, so, so what is, so Eamon looks tired over there too. How you doing, buddy? Hey, <laughs> I see the I, eyes closed. Secret, secret to everyone listening tonight, I'm on a lot of ads though. <laughs> oh no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm so not going to give you so much shit about it then. Cause he's like, he's over there. That's how the eyes are <laughs> no, like, he's like, he's like too comfy in bed, man, for a podcast. But anyways, <laughs> uh, but Bobby says about IWC. 
Hey, Sorgan Eamon, I just want to throw some of my thoughts out there for IWC's Cage Fury. It was my first time working production on the show, uh, and it gave me a different perspective on what goes on. I really enjoyed hearing the commentary in my ears on the live show, especially Joe Dabrowski and Mark Madden calling the main events. Uh, it was awesome seeing the angle with Rhino and Justin Plummer, even though uh, Justin Lamar couldn't be there in person. I enjoyed the women's match and the three-way dance for the Super Indie Championship. Also, there's uh, something scary about Rhino coming up behind you when you're not paying attention to the, who's behind you, especially when you've had nightmares involving him steal, stealing a tricycle from you. But all in all, it was an amazing show, and as a newer IWC fan, it was really cool hearing the crowd pop when John McChesney returned. Can't wait to see him in the ring. Great show. Great night. I think it's a second or third uh, experience at IWC, actually. And we're also making yeah. him work. We're already making him work, right? Uh, but <laughs> Which is cool to sort of... You kind of do look at wrestling from a different perspective when you are when you are working at, on it, in a sense. Like, right. I've noticed that. when, Like, right. I look at Inspired Pro shows much differently than I look at kind of, like, other shows I've been to, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I don't know why, but... Yeah, certainly, and 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 and, and, and I thought it was cool to kind of show, lift the veil open and let him see a little bit of that too, you know. And I try not to like, hey, here's backstage. Hello, everybody. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, but uh, but still, it was uh, you know, cool for that. And I think he's still like he's observing. He's he's on the audio. He's getting a little extra uh, from that. Uh, but he's still he's still kind of early and still a fan and, and good to get his perspective. And I love that he's getting invested in the product uh, a little bit too. But great show. Uh, War Games was a little weird because they oddly did an elimination. Uh, kind of thing for war games so th- that that kind of threw me a little bit rhino and tommy dreamer was great um all the stuff at the end was great uh the big thing and i think this is going viral at this point officially uh jock samson mm. missing the crowd in his dive outside the ring Near, he went nearly in- dying yeah yeah he went into the crowd and from what i understand damaged a chair in the second row so there yeah uh and jock and samson, jock samson- is no small man. <laughs> no, he's no small man. That's over on IWC's Facebook and YouTube and, and Twitter and everything. Uh, you can go check out that clip yourself. It's 15 seconds, real quick. It's 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 it's, it's nuts. He gets right up. He gets right up, and he took a picture of. I think it was the fan's chair that he broke uh, with the chair uh, at intermission. I saw that float around as well. So really, really fun fun time. Uh, great matches. Dylan Bostic, Andrew Andrew Palace, and and. Uh, um, Alex Daniels, uh, great match as usual, and a great rematch from Super Indy uh, in the finals there. Of course, not an elimination this time or anything. The women, I, I got to mention, we've talked about women's wrestling and everything on here. Um, the women in IWC right now, I think, uh, deserve a lot of praise. Because, one, we're talking about Britt, Britt Baker, who was on the show a couple weeks ago, in her second match, I believe. I don't think she's had any other since. She's been booked on a lot of stuff. I know she's going to pop up on AIW, and I think she has a couple other ones coming up and, uh, that she mentioned when she was on the show. And uh, and at the time, she had one match under her belt, okay? Uh, and Ray Lynn, amazing as well. Uh, and uh, I, I thought they, they had a really great match, a really solid match. Um, it's rare that you... Go to an indie show and see such younger, I don't want to say inexperienced, Raylan's been around a while, I think, um, at least a couple of years in this, but but still, I, I think she's a little greener in, in general, if I, if I understand correctly. We're going to have to get her on the show, I'm going to talk with her too. Um, but, uh, you know, to go to a show like this, and, 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 and Eamon, you've been to the show. Okay, I don't know. You're spoiled by Inspire Wrestling. You get Theta, Scott, and Athena <laughs> of all freaking people, right? So maybe you don't yeah. know what this is like. Well, you've seen that. You've seen, like, when the girls, when the girls are not as confident as the guys, I don't know what it is about their mannerisms that sticks out more. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Like, that lo- lack of confidence, like, is bigger when when the ladies have it and and, and both these well, i think there's i think it comes ahead. from a point of just the perception going in maybe yeah i guess fans so. is because you kind of have to you kind of have more to overcome in mm-hmm. a sense mm-hmm. but but i think it's something like uh we talked about Stephen amell with uh, uh SummerSlam. did a great job in yeah. there but there's a little bit of like that i don't know what to do with my hands kind of thing right when he's standing there a little bit and maybe he's a little nervous right. and i think a lot of girls are awkward in that way it, it, on the indie level. I don't know if they're just not getting enough experience, what the case may be. Um, but I, I've, I've seen that a lot. And even in like shows over the last few months, especially. Right. Um, and, and, and some girls just aren't 
on a level and, and, and it's so hard to find spots for them as we've discussed with many of our guests on the show. But when you go uh, uh, see Raylan and Britt Baker, I think like Britt looks like somebody that could be on WWE tomorrow, I think. You know, and mm-hmm. even like some of those girls on NXT have that little bit of awkwardness to them, right? Like, like, um, can't remember her name. Dana Brooke, is that right? Yeah. Uh, like, like she's got this little bit of awkwardness to her still that she hasn't shaken off, you know, or, or the stuff we're seeing from the Tough Enough girls. Don't spoil her who won. I'll watch it in the morning. Um, actually, I'll probably watch <laughs> when I go off here. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, and I think I don't see it as much on these two girls. And I think that's really impressive. I don't know if that speaks to the girls themselves, you know, Brit, especially being a newer, newer trainee, yeah. a newer graduate, um, uh, was the training or their, their ethic in general. Um, I, I think it's really impressive. And, and, and I don't know what the plans are, uh, as far as our other girls going to come in. Are we just going to see these girls fruit for a bit? And that's it. I, I hope there's more to it. I hope this is the start of growing into something bigger. Um, but, uh, but that, that's kind of, in a show just top the bottom full of bright spots and even bright spots in i think you know i've been impressed in matches that weren't supposed to be big things on the card that ended up turning into a very entertaining segment right um right and i feel like that happened a lot especially with the tag like i feel like the tag match was not meant to be anything special it was just going to be like, well, we got put guy here. Da, da, da. Okay, we, we we have a tag match on the card. Good. There we go. Uh, oh, at least I'm sure these people will be entertaining. And then all of a sudden, we might have a viral hit on our hands. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like, like. Right. I don't know. Like, like NXT, people are, are are taking opportunities and running with it. I feel like IWC at this point are people taking opportunities and running with it. You know, on all different levels. Um, there's a, a couple of weird spots still, but um, I, altogether, uh, this is easily the best show since uh, Reloaded, was, which was Plumber's first. Those guys are on 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 going on all cylinders right now. I'm seeing the conversations, and 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 it, really, they are um, at least on the marketing side. Uh, I guess if you can call it that, the promotion side. Um, I I really think there's something special happening there, uh, and I don't know if the, the the guys over there see it. I, I've I think they think I'm joking when I say in the chat uh, that something cool is happening here, but there <laughs> there is, and, and 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 I don't know if you felt this when you were doing Inspire back in the day, uh, but uh, but but when you're like, oh, hey, wait, 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 there's there's movement here, right? Like, wait, we're on to right. something here. Like, I, I I feel like something is happening there, and, and even a little bit, you know, RWA, the fact that they pulled 300 fans, you know. And they didn't have a Rhino versus Tommy Dreamer, right? That was they have a whole other special thing going. They have another brand of crowd going on there, and that is not a detriment to RWA or IWC or anything like that. They are two absolutely different things for absolutely different fans and promoting them in absolutely different ways, right? Um, some, and I think I think on both sides, I think some can learn from the other one. I think both can learn from the other one in how they acquire fans online and in person i if that makes sense i don't know i'm kind of no, i'm kind of being ambiguous here i i, I guess uh it makes sense you in my want, own head yeah, yeah. you, you kind of want to do both like it's um you know there are some people that do amazing at one thing and and, and amazing at another thing like you were saying like to take to take from both and be able to learn from that you know there's always something you can do better but like you said, like as long as there's that sort of upward mobility uh, in an organization, that's always really cool. So, so yeah, uh, I don't know. That's my thoughts there. Uh, so I know you got a lot of stuff. Oh, check out Cage Fury digital download, uh, individual matches already available on IndieWrestling.us. dot uh, us. I hope to have uh, RWA's aggression, including that that last match with Raver and uh, Gory, up by the end of the week. I think this week we're also going to launch individual match downloads for RWA. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole shows, uh, maybe just like kind of the bigger matches. Uh, I'm still kind of working through it. Uh, I should probably inform this, this is, them this is happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but the, the, it's really a lot of people are buying the matches and, and I like that that's an option and uh, people can kind of at least check out their favorite wrestler if not the entire show because I understand like you get an indie show 
maybe you bought it for AJ Styles and you don't give a crap about the local guys. You know what I mean? Like, like who hasn't bought yeah. one of those DVDs before? And, like, you don't care about local Joe, you know? Uh, and, and, and I think uh, Chikara, Chikara kind of does something similar with that now where they break down each match so you can pay for separate. Kind of like right. iTunes. Right, right. Yeah, that, that was kind of the idea is the iTunes thing. And it's really interesting to see what matches sell. You know, mm -hmm. um, whether it be like a lot of times the new people sell because their families are going out and being like, oh, let's see, you know, and their friends, <laughs> their, their family and their friends are doing that, you know, and I think it's, 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 it's like here's, the, it's like the mentality of like, like them bringing them to shows like mm -hmm. moving over into that world. And, and here's a hint. You know what I mean? Here's a hint. If you're a new wrestler with a promotion that does this sort of thing. Uh, tell your friends and family to buy that match. And this isn't just for me because I'm, I'm selling the damn things. But if you prove that you're putting butts in seats or, or, or downloading the thing, the promoters are looking at that. And mm -hmm. when you take that match and share it with your friends and family, I, I, it's kind of a weird thing. But, but, but really, you, you, know, you have to prove to the promoter you're worth the money and worth being there and worth the spot on the card. Right? Right. And if... You know, if you're just like take, you know, buying your match or being given your match by the by the promoter or whatever and saying, hey, everybody check this out, you know, but I think there's a little bit of you have to be your own advocate and you have these people like, hey, Johnny's wrestling. Awesome. I was like, great. Can you drop the buck, two bucks and, and, and tell the promoter I'm worth having around? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. money talks in this, you know, indie wrestling is not making anybody rich in the Pittsburgh right. area or anywhere else. Okay. So it is a factor. So, um, well, that's, that's kind of a side note there. Eamon, what's happening in your neck of the woods? There is some cool stuff that, uh, we just I, got to announce for inspire pro wrestling. Uh, we just announced the full card for our battle Wars show, which I'm very excited about. Uh, for those that don't know the battle Wars show, uh, is our code junction sort of thing with your pro wrestling which I'm very excited about because it was so much fun last year, uh, and I'm so excited to have it again. Uh, we got a lot of great Chikara talents coming down, guys like guys who have been here before, like Fire Ant. Uh, the throwbacks will be coming together as a unit for the first time, which is cool, uh, which will be really nice. Uh, we have um, Chuck Taylor, who's going to be a part, coming as part of his uh, uh, retirement tour of 2015. Uh, so it'll be nice to have him kind of stop in Texas and and. For us, especially because he is kind of part of our history. He was in our first ever uh, main event, so that's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, he'll be wrestling Matthew Palmer in a match that I think will really have the potential to steal this show. Um, so there's that. There's uh, We just announced that Orange Cassidy will be coming down, which I'm very excited about. Who's that? Uh, who's, uh, who's Orange Cassidy? Orange Cassidy, for those that don't follow Chuck Taylor's uh, Gentleman's Club. Oh, no. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He... Uh, Orange Cassidy is quite a, a quite an individual. Uh, uh, it'll be very interesting to see, and he's against uh, Keith Lee, Andy Dalton, Frank D'Angelo, which should be um, an interesting combo for Orange Cassidy to uh, try to overcome. Um, but yo, I, I'm, I'm very excited for those that have uh, seen Orange Cassidy. You know what I'm talking about, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah, it's it's going to be fun. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that we have going on. Uh, with the Chikara matches. Uh, oh, and we also announced the debut of uh, Hollow Wicked, uh, who will be coming down to represent Chikara Pro. He's facing our new Inspire Pro champion, Ricky Starks, in a champion versus champion match, which will be really cool. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. we got a, a, a street fight happening between uh, Angelus Lane and Delilah Doom, which should be very interesting, to say the least. These two have been heated rivals for most of the year. Uh, and uh, I think it's really going to come to a head. I think uh, this could be definitely a match that many wrestling fans and women's wrestling fans should keep or keep their eyes on. I predict. Um, so yeah, a uh, lot of cool stuff happening. Uh, uh, that event is going to be September thirteenth uh, back at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in Austin, Texas. Tickets are on sale at InspireProWrestling.com. Fifteen dollars for general admission. Uh, front row is already sold out, but you can still get your general admission tickets. They're very good. There's not a bad seat in the house. I know that's kind of a cliched phrase, but it really, I really mean it. Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, and there's going to be a lot of cool stuff happening uh, on that night as well. Uh, some stuff that may be uh, coming up too that I don't get to completely announce yet, 
but stuff that I, I know has kind of been in the works. I'll just say that much. Uh, some cool stuff that may be happening. But yeah, uh, inspireprowrestling.com for all the info on that and uh, Twitter at inspireprowrest. Awesome. Go check it out. By the way, in the meantime, I am Reverend Sorg of the Church of Perpetually Exempt Professional Wrestling. Please send your money uh, today. Some people will get that joke. Uh, sorry, we were having a discussion in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways uh no yeah go check out all that stuff check out indie wrestling.us check out uh, your local indie wrestling whatever that may be uh and just support it man support support whatever's going on or pro wrestling tees.com not just our stuff over there at wrestling man show on there uh but uh, uh, uh if you're digging somebody if you found somebody on uh online even even if you don't even have indie wrestling around and you're checking it out on the youtube maybe they got a pro wrestling t-shirt and maybe you can go buy one and put some money in their pocket and help them out. And, um, you know, I, I, I had a conversation uh, with myself. No, no, actually, this was with Will over on the Power Hour a couple weeks ago about being a fan out loud of podcasts, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think you know how much it's going to matter to that indie wrestler who got paid 20 bucks in a hot dog to drive across three states for that show that night and saying i really enjoyed your match and i'd like to buy a t-shirt and autograph whatever that is or even just if you don't have any money saying listen man i really dug that match tonight you know um and you know and i try to do that with with especially you know especially the younger guys if someone like okay that was good i'm seeing progress i try to say something to, to, to the people as i come across them after the show um yeah that goes a long way that you don't when I say support indie wrestling, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetarily, so it's very much appreciated by all these guys. But even just saying, Hey man, big fan, loved what you're doing, whoever it may be. And uh and, and maybe that, that's the thing that helped them uh, uh stick around a little bit longer and get a little further in this business. So Oh boy, Eamon. So work. Eamon, I love the work you do. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? No, I don't. What do you mean? No, I don't. Wait, uh, no, I, I love the work you do too. I uh, love the, it's the reason this thing is happening. Podcast hug, guys. All right. On that note, Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitters. I'm at Sorgatron. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, please drop us a line. All that stuff. Hey, big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro, outro music. BasicSickness.com. And check out everything else going on at SorgatronMedia.com. Until next time, support indie wrestling. With a hug. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. Com. Hi everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>